Oxygen saturation, or SAO2, or SPO2, uh, normal range is uh, 95 to 100%. Now, what does this really mean? What does uh, this percentage mean, and why do we so vigilantly look at this value on our patient? Well, first of all, it's determined, we use it to determine respiratory status, and it's part of our arterial blood gas testing, our SAO2. So basically, oxygen saturation, it's really a measurement of the percentage of hemoglobin that is bound with oxygen or that is saturated with oxygen. Okay, so oxygen is transported in our body in two ways. First of all, it's dissolved in the plasma, and that's our PO2, that's our, um, and that's the partial pressure of oxygen. And then we also have our SAO2, or our SPO2, which is our saturation of oxygen. And basically, about 97% of, a hemo- of oxygen is bound to hemoglobin, while just 3% is dissolved in plasma. So SAO2 and PO2 have direct relationships. And in fact, this relationship is referred to as the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. So what happens is, is, you know, as we bring oxygen into our body and oxygen becomes bound to hemoglobin, this is referred to as oxyhemoglobin, okay? And we want to keep about 95 to 100% if possible, of our hemoglobin saturated with oxygen. As oxygen travels via hemoglobin throughout our body, it needs to be able to deliver oxygen to distal tissues. Okay, and so we look at SAO2, and that's the saturation of arterial blood with oxygen. Okay, the SPO2 that we look at with our pulse oximetry, that's SPO2, okay, and what that's really looking at, it's it's looking at... uh, peripheral tissue oxygenation. It uses an infrared light that shines through uh, our blood, through our finger, and it can actually kind of shine off the hemoglobin and then it detects it on the other side of the, the little transducer to determine how much of that hemoglobin is bound with oxygen. Okay, so that's why there's that uh, the, the kind of two lights and it shines directly through the finger. It needs to shine through the finger in order to detect how much is saturated with uh, oxygen. Okay, so that's really why we use the SpO2. It's a very indirect measure of SaO2. And the problem with that is it doesn't really tell us tissue oxygenation. Okay, and for that, that's why we really look at the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to see what's our partial pressure of oxygen um, and how well are the tissues actually going to be able to be oxygenated. Okay, but SaO2 is a good, it's a good measure to determine what percentage of our hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen.